Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most uh, amazing Neuroxys map generator. Let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the Northeast, ending with Team 2 in the Southwest. Starting off with Team 1 Southeast, the most player in Riverbed. It is Babel going first land as an Aeon. He is a 1400. To his northwest, we have Little going first land as another Aeon here for Team 1. He is in forest green as a 1500. And rounding up the front line here for Team 1 is MSG going first land as a third Aeon for Team 1. He is in Chevy Crimson, and he is also the highest rated player on Team 1. To his north in Pac Man, Yellow News, some water is the Seraphim Commander. If Varanichek going first land as a Seraphim, he is a 1400. And to his east in the regard air slot player we slot we have Wuka going Wuka going first line as a fifteen hundred in orange the color orange and again he's going first land. So for team one side of the map they have three Aeon for front line one in Seraphim to the north and a Cybran in the rear guard which means team one does not have UEF technology. Starting up with Team 2 Southeast, the most player in Light Oak 10. It is System Shock going first line as a UEF. He is a 1200. In the rear guard this line here for Team 2, we have Cheerios going first line as a UEF as well. He is an Amethyst Purple as a 1600. Starting up the front line here for Team 2 is Io going first land, second land, and oh, so, sorry, second air, third land. He is in Rust as a 2200, the highest rated player on Team 2 and in the game overall. Another UEF fit for Team 2. Blazer of Flasher going first land. He is in Emerald Green as a 1500. And rounding out Team 2's lineup where we have the fifth and final UEF player of Kimmel Kyle going first land. He is in Royal Blue as a 1300. So for Team 2's side of the map, they only have UEF. So there are five UEF players here for Team 2. So which means they lack Aeon, Cybran, and Sarah from Technology. Team 1. Lacks UEF Tech, which is entirely obviously comprised of Team 2's lineup. And for 10 players on the map, how much reclaim do they have to scoop up? They currently are sitting at 12,000 reclaim, 1.2k mass per player to scoop up. Not a whole lot, but definitely a decent amount. Most of it residing in the middle of the map and a decent amount of it being on those upper plateaus in said middle of the map. But for Team 1 side of the map, for mass point layouts, they have one, two, three quad mix positions, a tri mix, as well as a quad mix back here, and uh, was that six star mix over here as well for the rear air side players. So definitely a decent amount of mass per player in terms of mass points to grab and to scale their eco hopefully fast because the faster they scale it, the more bigger Tories we get to see, and of course the more action that does occur. Let's go ahead and see where our players are headed off to. It's really weird to see an entire team comprised of the same faction. And uh, we'll see if that works out for them. The benefit is whenever units are transferred over due to a player's death, there's no issue with, okay, there's a different quote-unquote type of unit because it's a different faction and they have to make, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, it's a very easy transfer over. The downside is there's not really a lot of versatility. It's just UEF. So good shields, fat boys... That's, I mean, good artillery, but the downside with all UEF tech, the fact they don't really have a good mainline experimental unit. They don't have a monkey. They don't have a, sh you know, a Colossus. They don't have a Megalith slash, you know, they don't have a chicken. So there's none of that sort of really attack bot experimentals that Team 2 has that definitely will force them to just build Percy's on Percy's on Percy's on Percy's. If they're not building Percy's, they are doing something wrong because at this point, that's really all they got. <laughs> it is uh, definitely going to be interesting. Or they just do mass spamming of Fat Boys and just have a critical mass to the point where no land experimental skills can do anything. That also can work too, but it's not as reliable and it's really prone to air snipes. So... Definitely have to watch out for what Team 2 decides to do on the front line. Team 1, of course, a lot more versatile with what they have access to. Chickens, monkeys, Colossi, Megalus. They don't have fat boys, but, I mean, having four out of the five land experimentals is better than having one of the five. We do see a little bit of some scouting and raiding going down here from Babel in the east against System Shock. A couple of engineers will die off due to these incursions from some scout bots and a couple of Aurora as well kind of running around. The comm of System Shock's over here. 
on his quad mix position, getting a nice little production base online. In the middle of the map, Team 2's main front, sorry, Team 1's front line commanders pushing forward for the first set of plateaus. I don't really expect these plateaus to really be useful besides going for reclaim because they don't offer any mixes up here. I mean, they might be good for some artillery plays, but there's nothing of materialistic strategic value out of it. Mainly just, okay, hey, I'm at a upper plateau. You can't just have, you know, columns or units or whatever just run over the base. You have to actually send something up there, artillery or whatever the case may be. So it's definitely a double-edged sword. But we'll see if our players really do focus on it. I wouldn't be surprised to see one player go for those middle plateaus, but I don't really see much of anything else occurring from that. The only thing I do occur seeing is that there'll be a lot of hiding structures behind the plateaus themselves. Kind of, and that'd be a good place for a radar. It's really hard to get a bomber to come in and take that out. You'd have to approach from the northeast, for example, at this slot. So it'd be a very good place to put. Even an SMD would be good. You wouldn't be. I don't think you'd be able to fit it right here, but you'd probably be able to fit it probably right about there. So definitely a good place to put some uh, strategic targets or assets or whatever the case may be. We do see all of the comms for Team 2 have left their main bases. Uh, Team 2's Blazer being the last player to leave his main base. Team 1 we see 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we're seeing the, the last commander in the regular slot for Wuka leave their main base. So everybody on Team 1 and Team 2 have left their main bases. A couple of upgrades have been started. T2 in the south for System Shock, mirroring his teammate of Chemical in the west. Gun damage range has been started for Zayo and gun speed and range up here in the north. So offensive play versus defensive play in the northwest. And we do see range has been started for Babel in the east. And defensive play versus essentially an offensive play with his teammate, of course, of Zayo in the middle as well, going for more offensive plays. But they could just be for hit points, so that way they can stave off some damage and then they'll go straight for their gun upgrades. I have seen that. But usually when you start with the, the gun or the engineering suite upgrade, it's usually you're favoring one strategy over the other. We don't really see a whole lot of action down the middle. Just a couple of units just kind of patrolling here in the middle from Zion. Not really doing a whole lot. Not pushing in. We see Team 1's MSG being very uh, slow with their moving forward. We can see that he's not really pushing in too much. He's building up his main units over here and sending his comm over here. The benefit of that is he can monitor two different avenues of attack. The downside is if he gets swarmed, it's going to be a little bit of time before those units can respond to that swarming. But he should be fine for now. There's nothing really building up for Team 2 for him to worry about. But obviously, he doesn't really see everything that's going on Team 2 side of the map. So he's taking a risk right now. It's paying off. But... It could not, so he has to be very careful with his comm being all by its lonesome. Gun damage range has been started for Cheerios here behind Zio. Zio pushing forward with his gun comm. And range and speed have been done for Baba going for some PD and more T1 facilities just to probably pump out engineers or just some Aurora. We are seeing a little bit of water in the southeast and northwestern corners of the map. A little bit of spotting in the north and south as well. I don't expect to see anything really naval-wise out of any of these players. Maybe players will hide in the little ponds next to their main bases but that's very typical not really anything abnormal with that in the northwest we see a little bit of contingents of units outbound from Varanacek just guarding the west and the edge approach and guarding a t1 max uh well a possible t1 max spot don't really see anything happening of that as of round he is going to send them in and I think we do see Kemmel going to see those as well. So he'll be able to respond to that very, very quickly. Units are already building up to defend this little mech over here. He's not really worried about for that for the time being. I do hear some action going on somewhere on the map. I don't really see anything much of the wall sections besides are going to be very interesting. Preventing any sort of incursion from this avenue. Saying uh, no soup for you, no entry. You need tickets, please, or whatever the case may be. In the east, we see System Shock pushing against Babel. Of course, Babel has gun speed slash range on board, and System Shock only has T2 engineering suite, getting some PD online, going for some T2 triads. We do see Babel actually taking a lot of hit points to the chest, or damage at least. Plasma and projectile weapons, whatever the case may be. His Aurora are over here. I feel like System Shock could probably focus on the Aurora a little bit more, getting some veterancy on board that commander. His strikers 
completely focused on going for the comm this early in the game, nine minutes. I mean, it could be a nice to, you know, win for Team 2, but Babel was losing, I mean, a decent amount of hit points, but that the rate at which he's losing him is very slow now with all these units half time from Sister Shot completely destroyed. We see those Aurora going to be one-shotted pretty easily here, at least the ones that were damaged. And System Shock is now falling into the red, sorry, into the yellow, but he is getting a decent amount of efficiency from those kills. It does look like uh, he's going to try to try to make it out of range, but I think Babel might have him dead to rights here. He's barely on that range, and of course his units bopping into him doesn't really help as well. And System Shock is going to fall into the red. He needs some assistance from the air. He's getting some unfortunate reinforcements up on from his opponent of literal to assist engineers dropping on top of this position going that's probably not a good idea and system shock looking like he will be the first casualty of this game at nine almost ten minutes on the clock Babel will survive that explosion all those units around him will be destroyed and it is now a 5v4 in favor of team one that definitely goes to show why it's pretty important to go for not only the obviously the comms important to go after but all the units that are around the comm because if you can eliminate all the units and all your units die then essentially just it's calm be calm and at that point it just comes down to what upgrades are on board essentially so that's definitely a downside to system shock focusing the commander is at some point your units will die and if you don't have enough to really blitz down that commander it might not be worth it reduce Zio coming in to assist on the eastern side, he's being chased down by uh, his opponent of Cheerios and uh, his opponent of Cheerios, his opponent of Literal and Cheerios coming in to assist to kind of shore up any sort of you know, flanking maneuvers that could occur. We are seeing an engineer on board that uh, chariot here going to get whisked away because he doesn't want to drop in enemy territory. Now Babel's going to hide in the water. Definitely a good move here. He's going to send all of his units using his hover tech around, allowing him to still raid on the southern edge of the map. Definitely going to be, again, very annoying for Team 2 to deal with. They have to focus a little bit more attention over here because that calm of Babel is still alive. We do see some units trying to push in through the middle here. Outbound from Zio going after Literal's base, but with the Asylum nearby, it doesn't really get any value out of it, unfortunately, here for Zio. Nano Repair has been started for Blazer of Flasher. He might be sending his calm in here pretty shortly. Team 2's Chemical in the Northwest pushing with some artillery and some PD to try to Force back Baronacek in the north. He's down in the yellow, pretty close to the red. He is at two star veterancy, though. So he's sitting at 4,000 hit points. He would be in the red if it wasn't because of that and would be pretty close, probably to death, to be fair, because of that. But uh, he's going to be fine for now. We're seeing a little bit of some raiding units outbound from Blazer to try to intercept the comm, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. We are seeing reinforcements all the time here for Varen to check, so they'll be able to intercept these forces pretty well easily. And that firebase is getting nice and uh, expanded here for Kimmelkow. We'd like to see a T2 shield online just to protect some of this investment. But he does have flak, he does have PD, he does have artillery, so he has a little bit of everything. Doesn't have a missile launcher or TMD. Probably should build some TMD, just one or two of them. UEF TMD isn't great, so probably two. But besides that, he's pretty fine up there. We do see chariot not chariot courier on board with some engineers moving in to grab the reclaim in front of Kimokal and Kimokal's being like that's my reclaim what are you doing <laughs> Curious is like I need reclaim I need mass he has t3 air online team one also has t3 air online anybody else go for t3 air no t3 land is online for Veronicek as well and there are those units outbound from Blazer of Flasher going after a T2 next, but they're not going to get any work done with that sniper bot and that Ilshi nearby. Looks like he's going to try to push forward at least a little bit here. MSG is moving into intercept. He has gun range and sensor package online, which means he can see a decent amount of the map. He can see where the comm is. All these units are fully aware he's aware of those units and where they are and where they're going and all of that so not really going to be a big surprise here for team one when those units try to engage looks like they're trying to go all the way around and use the approach outbound from chemical cow to move in but i don't think it's going to make a huge difference there are some interceptors running around to deal with the bombers there's a couple of t1 archers in the mix as well some aa but it's going to be a while and i feel like team two sorry team one's baron will be fully prepared 
with his units and his T2, T3 units here pretty shortly. He is getting nano as well, so he's going to rep up pretty quickly with those hit points. So the longer this attack goes on for, the easier it is going to be for Varenichek to deal with it. He does cancel that nano. Looks like he's going to fall back at least a little bit. Shield is coming online here for literal in the middle of the map. He has speed on board. He'll probably go for range next. In the east, we're seeing a lot of build up here for Team 1's Babel. Just building a lot of T1 units, a couple of T2 blazes, as well as some asylums in the mix as well. I'd love to see those. But not really a whole lot of emphasis on T2. He might be skipping T2 and going straight for T3. He's getting some more blazes. That, especially in this advantage where you have Babel not really facing any land at the time being, he could easily just skip the T2 and go straight to T3 and really just hammer it home. But we are seeing the dual base of Zio being used to great effect, getting some Percy's online, skipping the Titan phase. At this point, there's a lot of land to cover. I feel like he should go for some Titans just due to the fact he's being attacked not only from Literal, but also from Babel in the east. So really need some rapid response units. And Titans would be the unit to use. Blaze is coming in, facing off against some of these pillars. Com of Cheerios coming in to assist as well. He has to be very careful, though. He is on his lonesome. He has no support. And he doesn't have any support even from Zio. He's nearby, but immediately next to him, there's nothing. Trying to deal with these blazes as they're taking out the pillars. Once the pillars are dealt with, those blazes will probably focus on him. He is the rear guard airsoft player, so Team 1 killing off the air player this early in the game would be very nice for them and being able to, again, split Team's focus even further. In the middle, not really a whole lot going on. Firebase still being expended here for Kimo Kong. He's going for T3. He still has a gun for a shield, has a decent amount of PD, has a TML, no TMD. Would like to see at least a TMD guarding that TML. But it does look like he's able to force back Varen to check. A bunch of units just sitting on the northern edge of the map here for Team 2 is a blazer or flasher. Not really doing anything. Could easily swarm the comm. But he does have his own units nearby, so I don't really think that's going to happen anytime soon and back in the south looks like the units from Zyre are able to intercept the forces of them from Babel Percy being swarmed right now don't know why it's all by its lonesome but that's going to hurt just losing that Percy very very easily there see this is where Titans would come into play really being able to blitz down all of these weaker Aurora and a couple of these fervors as well I, I do understand the you know need to go for T3 Percy's especially because he's going to be facing a lot of experimentals pretty shortly, I he would assume. A couple of blazes get past this uh, baseline defense here for Team 2 Zaya, but there are some PD coming online. Both of them do get killed off. More of them are going to be built. I do like this use of using the wall sections and the PD as a way to form essentially a dual layer defense of not only just annoying wall sections, but also PD embedded in said walls. Makes it a little bit more annoying to just kind of burst on through the uh, the front gates, essentially. Air grid being expanded here by Cheerios. I do like this kind of diagonal method because there isn't really a huge chance of Cascade. I don't know why there's not a T3 P gen. It looks like there was a T2 here earlier, but I uh, would like to see a T3 there. The only downside is, is that you don't get a lot of adjacency bonuses from this. You probably could build a pigeon on the other side of these would probably be the best way to do that but again you just have to be careful about any cascades that could occur i don't know it, it's definitely better that way to prevent that sort of you know just knocking down the dominoes kind of thing but i don't know i feel like he needs some more pigeons he is going to expand northward a little bit more so maybe that'll help with his uh energy costs and production speed and all of that Lots of ASFs are being built by both of these players trying to gain some advantage in the air. Gunships outbound, some stingers. Not my favorite, but again, it's something better than nothing. Going after the PD, that's definitely uh, probably what I would go for, just due to the fact you get a little bit more of that damage taken out. Interceptors over top targeting those weaker stingers. Stingers do retreat, and ASF do come in for Team 1 and Team 2 because of the first air fight of the game. Huge advantage here for Wuka getting a huge engagement here, and it looks like... Jurio's just getting slaughtered in the air. Oh, this is just devastating. It looks like it was about the same fight here. It had uh, Jurio's focused on the ASF. It might have been enough to gain air control, at least for a slight moment. But just 
I think what happened was he pulled them away just instinctively and just didn't give them a command to engage and Wuka benefited from it. Percy's there's literal. Yes, there are Percy's. That's what Team 2 is only going to be using unless they capture some engineers and build their own facilities, which you really never see happen anymore with capturing units. You do see it on one or two maps where there's just a neutral unit just sitting there. There's, I can't remember the name of the map, but it's the... Looks like a... It uh, kind of reminds me of the thing from the movie Man of Steel where it, like, tries to increase the gravity or whatever on the planet uh, that Superman destroys. It's on both sides of the world. I forget what they're called. Devastators, world shifters, or whatever they were. Anyway, that's kind of the shape of the water that it reminds me of. But uh, I don't think there's really any... Capturing doesn't really happen anymore, essentially. It's kind of a, it's a feature of the campaign, and that's realistically about it. There's so much else going on in, in Forge Alliance that it's really hard to really focus on. Oh, let me sit there, get an engineer on the front line, and capture a unit that's not firing at me. Yeah, that's uh, doesn't really happen. So just one of those things. Then you'd have to, in, in, even if you captured an engineer, you'd have to then get it back to base and build something with it because once you lose the engineer, that's it. You have to start the whole process all over again, and it's it's not really effective. We are seeing some Titans now being used to great effect for Zio, but and there's a lot of T1 artillery, and there's some comms and PD and armagers running around. So Team 2 has to be very careful, again, with how much they send out, where they send it out, and how much does Team 1 have to fight against this. Percy almost gets one shot by the comm. Com of Babel at four star veterans. He has shield, gun, and range. Sorry, gun speed slash range. Doesn't have advanced range yet. Kind of surprised that not all. Well, okay, literal has advanced range, but I'm kind of surprised that MSG doesn't. We do see Wuka on the front lines as well. He, I think he's going to return to his main base. Yep, that's where he's going. You know, about the 20 so minute mark. It's essentially, any rear guard airsoft players on the front line need to retreat. I mean, comms in general probably should start falling back at least a little bit, but especially the rear guard because they don't want to get sniped early on, and then you have to deal with having a land player focus on air and land and the APM and micromanagement, all that sort of thing. Makes it very more annoying to deal with. Artillery outbound going after Verona checks comm. He only has the gun on board, but does have three-star veterancy. We're sitting at a decent 40, 14,949. Of course, the math can't be even because, you know, why would it ever be? But... It's essentially like the uh, Galactic Colossus having 99,999 hit points instead of just 100,000 hit points. It's just one of those, why can't you just give them the one more HP kind of thing. Missiles outbound going after T2 Mex. Is this one protected by a nice TMD? Will it be able to shoot this missile? I think, yeah, I was going to say, it should be able to. It's high enough and it's within its range. And unfortunately for him, we'll call it missiles aren't really doing that much work especially with more team d being built as we speak looks like there are two of them it looks like no just the one maybe that's the artillery it looks like it's going after units over here trying to just really just annoy team one's baron to check as much as he can at 21 minutes on the clock team one sitting at all fi five players alive team two missing just some shock so they're at four players left team one and team two about the same amount of mass income in terms of totals, Team 2 barely in the lead, but not by much. So pretty much an even game for map control and mass income. Besides this little outcropping here by Team 2's Kimmel Call, which he needs to be careful because Team 1 can build a chicken or Colossus or a monkey and rip that base apart. So he has to be very careful with how long he sits there. But besides that, let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game. And of course, if you haven't done so already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the time and attention you give to these videos. And let's go ahead and see what our players are up to now. I don't think there's really much of anything right now. Heavy Shield has been started for Babel. He has gone for advanced range. It looks like all except for MSG have gone for advanced range on board. Their commander's GC at 70% says Blazer. Yep, it's actually closer to not even 70, closer to 90 that's going to open a door here for Team 1. Unless Team 2 could build a bunch of Percy's and other T2, T3 defenses. Probably could get some uh, Ravagers up here or some TMD or just something up here. We see some TMD, but more offensive capable defenses on board at these uh, plateaus. So out of 
say four players in the middle, one of them is using it, or having one T1AA seeker P, uh, turret. Doesn't really, I don't really count that because there's just one of them. So really realistically, only one player is using that uh, plateau to somewhat affect. Colossus is online. It's going to move in westward, and now Kimmelkal needs to retreat. I think that Colossus is going straight for him. I don't see any experimentals coming online yet as of yet from Varenicek, but again, has to be very careful. Another Colossus online here for Team 1 outbound from Literal. And is there another GC being built somewhere? No. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pablo go for one here shortly. With two Colossi running around the map, advance range has been started for MSG. Artillery getting destroyed by some incoming Aurora. There are some strikers in the mix. That's all I see are Striker and Lobo, so not really a whole lot of unit-on-unit uh, unit action here. And that Colossus looks like it's diverted south, where T1 bombers are on this case. Percy's coming to assist as well. Going to light that Colossus up with some fire. Not necessarily na I mean, you can call it napalm, but I feel like these have just standard explosive, like, incendiary bombs. And the Janus have the, uh, the napalm. Air fight over the top of this engagement here between the two airplanes. Looks like it will favor Team 2's Cheerios getting revenge on the earlier engagement. And I think, oh, I was going to say he had it, but the micro outbound from Cheerios has not been super great. He was kind of doing this kind of swinging back and forth. He will still win that fight, but he probably could have uh, delayed some, or not delayed, but done with some of those... Uh, ASS pretty quickly. Blazer Flasher coming in with his comm himself. Will drop, I mean, a decent amount of hit points. Oh, crash damage. Needs to get out of range of that. That Stinger might die to some crash damage. There it goes. He's going to be fine. And the ASF still strewning in here from Team 1 and Team 2. Coming in to reinforce this air fight continuously. Looks like it's kind of just null and void at this point. Since you both players have lost all of the ASF. I Definitely know that Team Two Shooters had the numbers, but the micro wasn't super great, and it gave Wuka a little bit more advantage. And there wouldn't be that much ASS, but ASS moving in to guard the gunships. Lots of stingers outbound here from Cheerios. Don't know where he's going with them. Looks like he's going down south. A large amount of units on the eastern side of the map here, and there's also a Harbinger on board a T2 Alumnar transport. Going to be dropped off over here. Already one of them dropped off. Going after some T2 Mexis here for Zio. Now he has to deal with some annoying transports running around. This one actually gets the word saying, hey, there's some interceptors on my tail. Need to get the heck out of there. And attack still outbound here in the east. He's doing both land engagements and dropping in land units with some transports. So kind of a nice little mix of getting some frontline forces online and then coming in afterwards. Gunship says literal. Colossus moving in. There's not a lot of AA here. There's a couple of flak, but not a whole lot. ASFs are sitting by. And it looks like Team 2's ASFs are really dwindling here. Team 1 keeping theirs together, at least as close as possible. Gunships, of course, just constantly engaging that Colossus. All of the AA has been dealt with. Gunships now being the primary target of those ASFs, giving the ASFs from Cheerios time to engage the ASFs from Team 1's Wuka. But it does look like those gunships doing a huge number on this Colossus. The mass will still be probably dumped on Team 1's side of the map, but the... Uh, the time it will take to reclaim and then rebuild will definitely aid the Team 2 in some more defensive measures. But Team 1 looks like they have won the air fight, the very, very, very long air fight that's been occurring the past mm, two minutes or so. Looks like Babel being forced back once again by a horde of Titans and Perseus, but the Titans not willing to fully commit to in that engagement. And those groups of units down south will run into a wall section here pretty quickly, so... They're going to have to move around that. Not all of them can go over the water or in the water, so some of them have to just manually target those wall sections for destruction. There you go, built an experimental. It is a fat boy. I could see Team 2's full UEF roster just going for Novaxes. I mean, somebody's got to think about it at this point. Everybody could build a Novax, transfer it over to one player, and then that one player could micro all of the Novaxes. And that would be very huge for Team 2 if they could keep the front line online or just keep the everything else online. Chicken 50% says Kimoka, so he knows of a chicken being built. There are some the gunships online for Wuka, those whalers. Definitely a, a nice mix of the broadsword and the restorer. I would say my opinion if you're going for like the law of averages of everything, that is the best gunship in the game. 
because you have decent AA and you have decent air to ground. Um, but if you're going for specialized one way or the other, obviously the broadsword is best for air to ground. Restore is best for air to air engagements. But the uh, Cybrids also have T1 and T2 gunships, so I mean, they have a nice little plethora of units available to them in the gunship variety. And those gunships are going to be protected by Wuka's ASF, and they're moving in, going after all these T2 mixers here for Kimmel Call. Kimmel Call again, going to be facing down a chicken here pretty shortly, should probably start retreating that commando, or else he is going to be killed. Second Colossus is now online, but now it's facing down a Fat Boy, and more and more units being built, and now we see some. PD being built on the plateau side as well. Going to be able to deter units from coming inbound at least the, through this lane over here. I don't I don't see why Team 1 doesn't send some more units down this. There's a couple of PD, but they're not as well entrenched as they are over here, so I'm kind of surprised not seeing more effort over here. And we're seeing units again outbound over here from literal, essentially ignoring the exact middle lane of the map. Colossus needs to retreat or it's going to be overrun by Harbingers and a Colossus here. And that's Colossus to drop to 55,000 hit points. More Percy's are being built to try to defend against this push. And now those units have broken through the wall section. Some PD are online. It is not going to be enough. Aaron to check finishes that chicken. And Cheerios and Zaire are having a nice little cool swim while their units duke it out on the front lines. And Percy's charged forward trying to give some time for that fat boy to get away, but... All it's going to do is allow the Colossus arms to get in range and grab some of those Percy's. I know they're trying to deal with the Harbingers, but I don't really think it was worth it. You would send the Titans in first and then the Percy's, because the Titans are obviously weaker and don't do as much damage as the Percy's. Could be building some units on board those Fat Boys as well. Probably some Parashields or just something to deal with this push. Team 2 doesn't really have much of anything except another Fat Boy, which could easily be sent over here to deal with this. Gloss is looking like it's perfectly fine with what it's gained and decides to retreat. Percy in hand as it drops it to the ground with its death. Gunships are inbound. T3 and T2AA coming in to respond. And we are seeing some T3 gunships as well coming in. This will probably rip apart that Colossus and allow it to be uh, reclaimed by Team 1 but still be killed off. And there's a lot of flak here. A lot of those gunships taking a lot of damage, so it's going to be just essentially kill the Colossus and call it a day. Stingers aren't even engaging as well. And it does look like the Colossus will stay alive. Unfortunately, it might not be enough. They're going to move in. They're going to try to go for it. Colossus at one star veterancy. It's all about killing it off at this point. Losses be dang. Nope. Colossus doesn't die. Less than 5,000 5, hit points remaining on board that experimental Chicken leading the charge here against Kimmel's main firebase. And unfortunately, that chicken doing a decent amount of dodging here. There's a ton of Ravagers that have been built to try to deal with this. And Varen and Chick doing a very good job of playing essentially, I don't know, not chicken, but essentially playing a nice little game of you know, bob and weave, bob and weave. The Com is still trying to build a shield emitter, but unfortunately, he is going to die here. There's no amount of running that will save this commander. And this is going to be a nice kill here for Team 1, opening the door for a Western engagement. They're going for the side players first, or at least whatever they could go for. Tom is nearby. He doesn't have a gun. He doesn't have much of anything to really fight against. Chicken uh, completely ignoring him. We're seeing some Othams coming in from the rear as well to assist. And this entire base is gone. There's no hope. He is completely surrounded. There's no hope from relief from Team 2's other comms or units or whatever the case may be. And there it goes. Team 2 loses another play here. Gets a nice five-star vacancy at the last second, I think. But it does not save them. That is the death of Kimmel in the West. Killed by Baranacek's complete swarm attack. It is now a 5v3 in favor of the northern team of Team 1. They are now on three bases. We'll probably give the remaining base for Vernacek. Yep, over to Blazer of Flasher, because why not? And now we might see the transition into some artillery or game ender tech. Nuke has been built by Cheerios. That's definitely something that team could use to great effect. Does team one have SMD? Yes, they do. And yes, they do. So two SMDs are online. Nothing in the back line. So team two could easily go after these two SMDs and launch a nuke and kill something off. Maybe the air grid 
maybe a comm or two. Just depends on the density of said comms. Looks like these two fat, uh, fat boys have pushed forward, and the whalers are inbound going after those fat boys. Unfortunately, it's not a lot of AA coverage for said fat boys, and this might be a nice one-two punch here from Team 1. Gunships coming in as well all the time here for Wuka. And all the ASFs going to rip apart the ASFs here from Team 2's Cheerios. The first fat boy is down. Second fat boy will be destroyed. There's more flak coming into assist and T3AA being built up. But those hit points on board, those fat boys are being dropped very, very quickly. There it goes. And both of the experimentals here for Zayo have been destroyed. Looks like the attack in the southeast got destroyed very, very quickly, at least earlier on. Go, go, says Wuka, go, go. Team 2 is going to try to reclaim as fast as they can. And Team 1 doesn't really have... Well, okay, never mind. Scratch it. They have two Colossi. One of them still that one from earlier on in the red. Probably should just control K and build another one. They're essentially just going to dump mass on Team 2's doorstep, which they already have. Percy's coming in to try to guard that reclaim field, but don't really know if it's going to work. Looks like those forces are going to divert southward. Not go over here for this one, this lane. West, I mean, there is a fat boy online. There's only one of them, though. Chicken is defeated. We'll dump a little bit of mass on Team 2's side of the map. But, again, the damage is done. The entire western side of Team 2's lineup has been destroyed. They have this section of the map as well. But they're being hemmed into a corner, especially on the northwestern side. Team 1 owns probably about 65 no, 70 is too much. Probably about 65% of the map. 32 minutes on the clock. Do we see any sort of efforts to mass load that nuke? There's a little bit of assistance, but not much. We are seeing a satellite started here for Cheerios. And Mass Fab Farms going down here for Blazer of Flasher. And artillery has been started by Wuka. He is sitting on dual bases. Team 1 and Team 2 producing, I was going to say roughly the same amount of mass, but Team 1 leading the game just by a little bit, just by sheer map control they're winning. 1.8, 1.9 to 1.7. And Total Massacre does still favor Team 2, but ever so slightly reclaim is, pro I was gonna say reclaim is probably the reason why Team 2 is in the lead. They're sitting at you know more than essentially four, about 40,000 more mass. Colossus, the first one has most likely been destroyed. Oh, well, actually, no, I don't even. I oh, actually here. It just took a second for it to actually die out. Colossus are being focused down by the Fat Boy and those broadswords. ASF's inbound here from Team One's Luka to deal with the ASF from Team Two's Cheerios. Now focusing the gunships. Ravagers have also been built in the interim to assist. Lots of damage going down here. Not a lot of flak remains here. There's a couple of units running around, some ascendants. We are seeing some ASFs outbound from literal now. So two players in the a air game here for Team 1. Babel builds his own experimental, most likely a Colossus, because he is an Aeon. And those, uh, those broadswords are dwindling, but that second Colossus is going to die here. Oh, 4,000. Oh, no, it doesn't. 4,000, less than 4,000 hit points remain. All the ASFs have been destroyed here from Cheerios. Probably should have tried to go for the kill here, but there is a ton of mass to scoop up and engineers already on station from both teams to scoop it up. And, of course, those harbingers are able to do so as well. Currently on the map, 182,000 mass, and most of it residing essentially around Team 2's front line. And so Team 2 needs that reclaim online immediately, or Team 1 is going to run away with this game. Currently sitting at mass incomes, 1.8 for Team 2 and 2,000 for Team 1 still keeping in roughly about the same amount of mass income but team one has now overtaken team two in total mass accrued colossus in the main base here for blazer of flasher at least the main fire base and there it goes it's going to be another chunk of mass for team two to scoop up they need to turn it into actionable items there's another colossus down here charging directly into zio's base i don't really know where this is going probably just should have just sent it home or at least trying to take out the middle defenses here it's not really going to go anywhere. Nuke is outbound. What is it going for? It's going for the air grid, but it's not going to get past the dual SMDs that have been built. This one from Wuka covers this area, and the one from Literal, that is MSG, covers this. So there's... It's going to see, you can see, barely gets grabbed there by that uh, SMD. A little bit of overlap, but not by much. Hardy Creep says Kimokan and SMD says literal question mark and SMD says Wuka. 
He built his a little bit far forward. I would like to see just a backup one. Don't have to have any assistance on it, but just you know, maybe one right here or something, just to have a backup, just in case both those fall. Because the worst thing would be you don't have a personal SMD in or around your base, and it just gets destroyed, and then you don't have a backup, and then stuff blows up, and it's not a good day. But Team 2 is still trying to fight with those Fat Boys. Again, that's the only unit they really have to fight back with. Multiple Fat Boys being built, but a Chicken online again here for Vern to check this base. is not going to feel good, that Chicken coming in range of those Fat Boys. Percy's coming in to assist. There's a lot of damage going down to that Chicken, but that Chicken is getting some vengeance from its earlier brother. There it goes. First Fat Boy has been destroyed. This Fat Boy actually should just be going west, not necessarily east. The broadswords might be enough to kill off the chicken before the chicken kills off the fat boy, but it looks like more and more PD are being built as well to deter any incursions. They have two air players, Cheerios, Yas, Zayo. They need to start getting into some late game slash end game strategies. We have one man down top. I mean, you have two men down technically. Heavy shield has been started by literal. Nuke has uh, doesn't really been loaded that much. First satellite is almost done here for Cheerios. And we see, again, any emphasis from the UEF players to go for... I mean, they're going for an artillery. That's great. But Team 1 also has an artillery online. Probably going to go for a second one. More shields are being built. Cybern shields aren't great. But I know 1v1 fight... Shield good's going to be fine for both players. It's really only when you add two or three of them is really when it makes it a huge concern. Another Colossus is built for literal. I don't see any emphasis to go for anything else here by him besides just more SACUs and some Colossi. More chickens are being established by Verunicek. I do like this constant pressure for him. It constantly focuses some of Team 2's attention northward and not necessarily inward to their own base. They don't build up more, you know, artillery or satellites or whatever the case may be. Group of units just sitting here in the south. This could be a nice vector of attack here for Team 1 to, again, distract Team 2. It's all about distracting. They have all the APM in the world in the sense that they have two players more alive than Team 2. They can spread out their influence, spread out a little bit more emphasis around the map, whether it be in the south or in the north or down the middle. Time to quit, says Zio. No, I don't think so. They can still come back for this if Team 2 consolidates their efforts going for one thing, whether it be just a massive amount of artillery or a game ender or a bunch of nukes or a bunch of satellites. I think the satellites might be the cheapest option. More of them are being built as we speak here by Cheerio. So I feel like if Team 2 does get into the mass satellite spam, that might be enough. They're the only ones that have access to Novaxes in the game, obviously because no one else on Team 1 is UEF. So that might be the way around it because Team 1 has artillery, Team 2 has artillery. So, I mean, it's going to be an artillery war at some point. It looks like second artillery has been started by Wuka. Obviously, we know Zayo's building his second artillery. He's going to finish shortly. He needs more shields. Only have two shield emitters for two artilleries is not enough. I mean, you have three right here, but it's... You need at least one in each of the corners of those P-Gens. Don't really know what happened with that, but okay. That was very weird. It has been a very much of a slowdown on land emphasis here for both of the teams. The only thing that we see of land is in the northwest. And that's mainly due to the fact that Varanichix is constantly pressuring Blazer to focus that avenue of attack. Shield heavy is almost done here for literal. He might build an artillery. Yep, he is going to build an artillery right here. A nice little emissary. And that is the best T3 artillery in the game. And Team 1's going to have three artillery here pretty shortly. Satellite running around. Doesn't know really what to focus on. Another satellite has been built here by Cheerio. He's going to build a third one here pretty shortly. More shield coverage here for the air grid. Wouldn't like to see that, especially due to the fact that uh, Team 2 is going to have two artillery pieces here shortly. Zio does not have enough distance in shielding. Even if I thought he had somewhat close to enough, obviously I will never say he has enough that anyone has enough to be fair artillery landing in around the air grid needs more shield coverage he is getting more but it's a little bit more delayed his engineer is still running around grabbing whatever they can for you know building the third Novax. luckily the artillery from team one is still hitting the shields and not necessarily the pigeons so that's essentially a little bit of luck here for team two but luck usually runs out in this game you can only live on it for so long 
lines of Colossi being built by Babel. And again, Literal is starting that emissary. Once that comes online, it could be very bad here for Team 2. They need more shielding. Second artillery is now done here for Wuka. So it's now 2v2 in the artillery game. Bad boy, I don't agree with that. Getting more shields is the priority. Two Colossi pushing down the front line here. More and more fat boys being established. Is it going to be enough? It might be enough to deter, especially with one of those Colossi already in the red. Sub 5,000 hit points. There it goes. He's pretty killed off very quickly. It's just due to the fact that that one was the one that was weakened a long time ago. And again, it's just one of those things where it's nice to have a Colossus, even if it's at 2,000 HP. But when you're sending it forward and you know it's going to die, you might as well just control K and be done with it. Gunship's coming in targeting the second Colossi. Once these Colossi are dead, that will be it for this attack. There'll be nothing left except for the gunships inbound here. That might be enough here to push through these bad boys. But there's a decent amount of AA being spammed up as well. ASF fight here between Little and Cheerios. Cheerios going to lose that fight quite handily just due to the fact of the gunships being there, but not just those. The amount of ASFs built by Literal or transferred over to Literal is a decent chunk. And now here they come to shield those gunships. Both of those Colossi are dead and gone. It looks like they might be targeting the artillery over here in the west. Emissary, not emissary fire, but uh, destructive fire is raining in around these artillery. And those gunships are being ripped apart pretty quickly here by the AA from Team 2's Wuka. That was enough. They probably could have gone after one of those uh, fat boys, but there's just so much AA that's been built. Team 2 has done a great job of countering air with a bunch of defenses, but the shield is about to fall, trying to assist it, it looks like, but it's not going to be enough. All it's going to take is one emissary shot, and that middle shield is going to lose all of its capacity. Emissary is in the green. Lots of build power around that emissary to finish it off as quickly as they can. And Fat Boy is running around the map. Team 2 needs more long-range firepower. Obviously, they're worried about the Colossus, the chicken, the monkeys, all that sort of thing. And three Colossi in the north, proving that point right now. And those Fat Boys trying to run for their lives. There's not really a lot of T3 units remaining here. Percy's are being grabbed, gobbled up very, very quickly here. More and more experimentals being built by Babel. We see one, two right there, another one being built. And more Colossi also being built by Literal. That emissary is done. That emissary is going to mainly target that artillery. And that is not enough shielding. More shielding is going to be built, but I don't think it's uh, soon enough or that much, to be fair. Especially when you have two artillery already focusing this position from the Cybern player of Wuka. And in the east, another Colossi has been destroyed very, very easily, though. I do like the kind of trying to go around the edge, but... I mean, that needs to happen at the same time that this attack is happening. It happened essentially one after the other, I'm going to say, at the same time. So not really best timing there from Team 1, but more attacks coming in, going after this middle section here, trying to just slowly whittle down Team 2's eco, the defenses, everything. Nuke is loaded, has not fired it yet. Third satellite is almost online. Are there any other satellites being built? Yes, there's one from Blazer. That one's almost done. I think the time for that. And the shields are down around that artillery. 42 minutes on the clock. All it's going to take is for one or one or two very well-placed artillery shots. And we have the fusion reactors already primed for reclaiming. And there goes that uh, artillery due to the secondary fire of that emissary. And there goes the second one. Oh, there goes the artillery. Can't break cyber shields with two satellites. And two artillery, says Zaya. Well, to be fair, Wuka was building a ton of, of shields, and they were assisting multiple shields as well. So it just goes to show you that, I mean, you can build enough emitters. You need to assist some of them, but you need a good mix of both. And obviously, the emissary didn't help that situation. I feel like if it was just disruptors versus the dukes that were built, I think eventually the dukes may have broken through with that satellite assistance. But it would have taken a while. But that is Team 2's main card to play. They're getting more satellites online, but I don't think it's going to be enough, unfortunately. 
Gunships being ripped apart by the ASFs here from Team 2's Literal. Just cannot seem to get anything going with those ASFs. And now this mass fab farm is going to go up in smoke pretty quickly. There it goes. Just everything is gone. And there goes a lot of eco here for Team 2's Blazer. I feel we lost those one when the gunship slaughtered the entire eco of our top guy. I wouldn't say that. I would say you probably lost it when there's three artillery online for Team 1. And they probably didn't focus another game of disappointment. No, this game is hard, man. I mean... I mean, it is hard. It is. It is a very much a hard game to play, and you know, players sitting at 1,400 to 2,200 definitely show that you know, just because you have a lower rating does not mean you can't compete against someone who has a higher rating. It does not. I mean, they could have a bad day. You could have a better strategy than them. It could be 1 a.m. in the morning and they're tired. Could have played eight matches before this. Like there could be a lot of reasons why, but don't think this. I think the satellite production would have been enough. But I feel like had Team 2 focused a little bit more on the satellites, it might have been enough. Or, I don't know, more shielding. Because the Duke was taking all of the fire first. Once that got taken out, it's just open for business for Team 1. In the sense that they have four artillery now. Well, there's another one being built by Literal. There's one, two over here. I don't see a third one anywhere. Explosions do occur. That is... Zayo's commander, he control case, throws in the towel. It's a 5v2 game in favor of Team 1. The air grid for Cheerios is being decimated. Cheerios control case. M uh, Mabor has been started. I feel like Team 2, again, had they focused on this, that probably would have won them the game. Well, not necessarily won them the game, but would have brought them back in the game at a minimum. And Blazer is the last remaining player on Team 2. And you did see that desync. Obviously, at this point in the game, desync is kind of... And it's not really that important because we see what direction the game was going. Unless that Maver was built, unless that Maver was heavily shielded, maybe that desync would have made a difference. But because it's just being constructed and sat and artillery still pressuring Team Two. Oh, it's over here. That's where that fourth one is, and the fifth one is almost done here for literal. So yeah, it really wouldn't have mattered. And I feel like maybe building a Duke or two would be fine, but. Either heavily focused shielding or heavily focused satellites or heavily focused the Maver. I think Team 2 was trying to do too much of one thing or too much, too many things and not much of one thing. And that's really what kind of put them on the back foot. Also losing the, uh, you know, two players kind of early on, one of them earlier than the other. And Team 1 still having all of their players remaining. They still have all the APM, all that stuff. That may have played a huge difference as well. But, I mean, at this point in the game, I mean, it's just Col you know, Colossus chasing down Fat Boys. Artillery chasing down Fat Boys. That's never fun to watch. But that was actually a really well-placed artillery shot from that uh, you know, MSA. Both of the shields are down. We have Hubbatham fire as well. That Colossus might die. Oh, that was a great shot. Almost one more shot's going to kill off that Fat Boy. A great shot from that emissary. Jeez, well placed artillery shots from Literal over there. Oh, here comes another one. Will it kill off this fat boy? Oh, I think it will. Yes, it does. The secondary pulse kills that fat boy off. Two, three more remain. But the southern side is completely destroyed. There's really not much left there. We have artillery now raining around Blazer's commander. He does have the shield upgrade as well. So it's going to be, you know, 33,000 hit points, almost 34. It's going to make a difference, but. He throws in the towel. I don't blame him. He essentially was on the back foot for most for a decent section of the game, especially with Wuka, not Wuka, but Zayo and Cheerios Control King as well. And that is the game, folks, here at 46 minutes on the clock. Team 1 wins the game. MVP of the match. Might have to go to, I think... Mm, I think literal no uh, I think Babel might grab it because he put a lot of pressure on team two earlier on he was able to kill the commander which definitely helped out it relieved a lot of pressure on this southern side it split Zayo's focus both in the middle and in the south so we had to constantly go back and forth he just kept pressuring kept doing annoying things dropping units down here having units coming from the south that just kept annoying team two enough keeping Zayo busy enough to be you know again constantly back and forth we had MSG in the middle holding position. 
and we had, of course, the air player Ruka being very solid. He was building a Scathless, because why not? But I feel like Babel definitely opened the doors for a decent amount of Team 1 success, so I think I'll give it to him. I think he did a very good job. Let me know down in the comments if you felt the same way or not. But if you haven't done so already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching to the end and end of the video. And I will see all of you in the next one.